Simply stated, a recession is a general slowdown in the economy. It is not a, like a depression where basically the economy stops dead. But we see higher unemployment, we see credit harder to get, we see a just general lack of, of retail buying. There's a lack of consumer confidence, for lack of a better term. Well, that's the funny thing about recessions is that generally the economists cannot declare if there's a recession until they've had about 18 months to look at the data. And so what happens is, and we've seen this in the media lately where there's been a lot of discussion about things like the inverse yield curve where they're saying this predicts recessions and we must be worried. And it may or may not. There's a saying that economists predicted 10 of the last five recessions based on the inverted yield curve. So there's lots of different ways in advance to try to figure out what's going on. Some of it is just a feeling of unease. For example, we are in the longest bull market in history. We're about to reach new highs, and everyone assumes this can't go on forever. And it probably can't. There are always a recession to kind of reset things. When it will happen and how long it will be is something of a mystery until afterwards when we can look back and go, oh yeah, that was it. The inverted yield curve means that people think that we're in for a long period of tight money and they want to lock up their money in a safe place like a 30-year bond and willing to pay less money for it. And it affects us mainly because it's talked about a lot in the media. And when those things, we hear those things, even in just the mainstream media, not just the financial media, it starts eroding our confidence. And we start getting scared. And even though it's not necessarily a recession, people may slow down their buying if their consumer confidence has, has declined. And therefore, that's, that's where it's probably more important than the actual financial impact on the bond rates on, for the individual consumer. It basically is a, a sign that you don't have any confidence that things are going to be good in the short term and you don't want to be in a place where you've lent your money out at a high rate and then when the, it comes due, you, can't, you have to get even less than that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun to blame people and there's usually a lot of blame to go around but it's hard to pin on people. For example, in 1986, a change in the tax laws created a huge problem for savings and loans because the developers all of a sudden couldn't write off their real estate investments and created a lot of dysfunction that went on for a lot of years. In, two th in the late 1990s, the so-called tech wreck, where internet companies were going public and people were bidding up those companies, but the reality is that they weren't building anything and when people finally realized that these companies hadn't made any money, weren't going to make any money, the whole thing kind of collapsed. More recently, in 2008, the last big recession we had, several large financial houses, including Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns, went broke. In addition, something like 450 banks failed. And that was probably, that was essentially caused by bad business practices by the bankers. They probably should have gone to jail, at least some of them should have gone to jail for what they did, but we don't send bankers to jail anymore. We like to say that a recession is when your neighbor loses his job and a depression is when you lose your job. And so probably the best thing you can do is, if in the midst of a recession, if you're in a business that is badly impacted, for example, you're in the home construction business and interest rates have gone up and people aren't buying houses, it means people aren't building houses anymore and you're probably out of a job. And so specific industries can be directly affected other industries may not be directly affected, but they'll be impacted where the construction worker would go and buy things at the store. Well, he's no longer able to buy things, so if you run the store, you're in trouble also. So depending on how long the recession is and how long deep it is, you may be affected on a personal level. Are you in an industry that may be affected? For example, folks who live out in Midland, Odessa are used to oil booms and busts. 
And when you're in the middle of an oil boom, it's great fun, but you also know this always turns around and you need to prepare for it. For everyone should be doing what they should be doing all along, which is building up an emergency fund. You should, the saying is you should have six months of savings in case you lose your job. That's a tall order that very few people do. I think at the very least you start with a savings account that's enough to say buy a set of four tires, which is an unexpected expense that is fairly significant. Uh, the other thing is just to work on really building up a war chest. If you think you're in an industry that's at risk, you should be saving a lot more than that. If you work in a line of work that has, pays overtime, learn to live on the regular salary and bank the overtime. You may discover that I still have my job, but I'm not getting more overtime. And so learning to live within those boundaries is going to be very helpful.